Hello, this is Mike, nostressmike.com. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, on, on reading the end of the book, um, it's funny because I'm not the only one that does this. And whenever you get mixed up with uh, the law, Uh, remember they have the advantage and the reason is not only they read the end of the book they wrote the book <laughs> so you are at a total disadvantage uh, that's why uh, I always recommend don't get involved and uh, down here like I say it's much easier because once the law starts looking like they're trying to get involved, you take steps to stop it. Uh, normally that's, uh, I say, uh, paying a bribe or uh, making some calls or whatever you got to do. Uh, because the laws are not set up for the benefit of the people. Uh, now, remember... Okay, I say, I train SWAT teams. And this is what I talk about when I say uh, the military and police don't know anything about self-defense. And uh, the reason is, they make things happen. Um, okay, when you call a cop, they come after the fact. Normally, uh, in the way of police, uh, their job is to make reports. That's normally what their job is. And you, there's all kinds of court cases showing that uh, the police have no responsibility for protecting the public. <laughs> they have none. And uh, when you see uh, how police procedures are done, uh, it has nothing to do with the public. Uh, what they're doing is they're taking care of themselves. That's the only thing they, the, the only thing the government, bureaucrats, and anything involved in something like that, the only thing they do is cover their own ass. That's the way it is. They do everything by the book because the book is what protects them. When they start stepping outside the book is when they start having problems. The thing is, they rewrite the book. And uh, a good example is, like I say, when I was uh, in the 70s, I was running around with the sheriff department and we, we dealt with uh, the police department and we dealt with the public and stuff like that. And the idea at that time <coughs> was to protect the public. Uh, at that time, we looked for bad guys. That's really what, we, that was our job, <laughs> look for bad guys. Uh, we didn't look for people without a seatbelt. <laughs> we didn't do that. We, uh, even when somebody had a, a light out or something like that, uh, we'd just, uh, you know, we'd stop them sometimes and we would uh, just let them know that their light was out. We wouldn't even ask for ID driver's license or none of that stuff and the reason is one of our jobs also was to profile we looked at people and we could make a judgment on what it is and as we're looking at them and we're profiling them then we'll decide if we want to see their ID and uh, see if they got a driver's license and then we'll see if we're, uh, we'll run a check on them uh, if it seems like that it's called for uh, uh, now, if you notice, um, that we're, everybody's treated the same. Yeah, and uh, it's funny, one of the biggest things that I really, I've really noticed was uh, taking lives. Uh, the police really didn't go out looking to hurt people. We didn't really look 
at the public as they're the public and we are the enforcers. We didn't, we didn't look at them like that. Uh, we were part of them. What we were looking for is, like I say, the predators that are amongst the public. That's what we looked for. And when we found them, we didn't look at the book and see we can kill them. Uh, this, this is what we can do to kill them. We didn't do it like that. The whole idea, you find the predators and then you put them into the system and then the system will put them to court and, and do all the stuff that the system was really built to do. It was built, uh, like I say, laws are made for less than 10% of the population. But, and at that time, we looked for that 10% that those laws applied for. Now, um, these laws are meant for the population. They're not meant for us. It's, it's, they're meant for them. See? I mean, that's, that's their attitude. We're the enforcers. And it, it doesn't include uh, uh, the public. The public is a whole different thing. And we've got to keep the public in line because they're they're not right. We're the ones that are okay. That's their attitude. So we didn't look for a reason or an excuse to hurt people. And it was funny because uh, we didn't have non-lethal anything. Uh, about the only non-lethal we had is the ones that we, you know, we would have to beat the hell out of them, put the cuffs on them, and haul them in. And it was funny because people would pull knives, I mean not people, I'll put it this way, that 10%, the, the criminal element would uh, pull knives, pull guns, stuff like that. And we would disarm them just about all the time. Uh, you heard me talk about nobody wants to get shot. And that's the same thing. When they pull out a weapon, uh, or a gun, let's say a gun, they pull out a gun, uh, the chances are they're going to be thinking real hard before they pull out that gun. And we will give them the option to put the gun down, or we would take steps to take it away from them, or we would do what we have to do. Okay, uh, it's funny because knives was a it was a joke. You pull a knife on a cop back in the seventies. Wow, man, you you made a mistake. <laughs> Take that knife away from you, and what I tell you, you're gonna they're gonna kind of rough you up before they put the cuffs on you and put you into the system. And um, it's funny because I thought there for a while I was thinking the criminal element has get has been getting. Um, more violent and it's what I what I'm seeing is uh, the enforcement is getting more violent and as the enforcement gets more violent so does the violence uh, for me I thought if you really want to make a good cop don't let him have any firearms. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because now he's got to negotiate. He's got to, he's got to think for himself. Not use the book. He's got to think. Because each circumstance is di different. Each person you deal with is different. So they're going to have to think when they do that. Now, what they're taught is, I think it's funny, because we've gone from when I was running around with them, disarming them, into uh, they went to a thing they got a weapon, they got a weapon, you know, and everybody gets all excited. Okay, uh, they went to that. Then they got to the point where, well, he's got a weapon, but, uh-oh, uh-oh, he's pointing it at us. Now, now we can shoot him. Okay, see, they're looking for an excuse to shoot him. So then that up the violence. And uh, I think it's funny because now they're to the point where... He's reaching. Okay, so in other words, when somebody reaches, now it looks like that is grounds to shoot somebody. And uh, 
Okay, I think it's funny because uh, same thing I say, you know, you don't see one on one, one cop against the one bad guy. It doesn't work like that. It's all they're always outnumbered, and so what they do, I mean, I mean the, the bad guys outnumber. The, there's a lot of good guys, supposedly good guys, and then what they do is look, he's reaching, and then bammo, everybody wants to take a shot at him. I think that's really weird too, and uh, I've noticed it in a lot of your your big. Uh, you know, like Waco and uh, Ruby Ridge and all, all these kind of things. Everybody wants to get a shot. And I don't know this for a fact, but it's almost as if if you get a shot in, good. Now they're going to move you up. They're going to move you out of that department because you already done killed somebody. But that's okay. And we're going to move you to another department. And then, but nobody ever goes to jail. You see, none of these guys are prosecuted. So, well, very few. Uh, I think Ruby Ridge, they, uh, they did a little bit of something on that, but not really. And uh, because what they've done is they just rewrite the book. And then they rewrite the book, and like I say, they move people around, and then like I say, that's how the system has been working. So, uh, when it comes to, uh, and I remember, we aren't in that book. We don't read the book. We don't keep up with the book. And that's what all their supervisors do, is they keep track of the book and make sure that they know, you know, okay, you can do this, you can do this, you. So they're not thinking about uh, options. They don't think about options. They're, they're looking for you to fit in a certain pattern so they can do what they want to do. You know, they know where the book says they can, they can arrest you. The book knows when they get to a certain point in the book, they know they can beat the hell out of you. And uh, when uh, in the book, if you react this certain way, then we can go on and kill you. See, so um, the violence has escalated. And it's, uh, now it's escalated to they're really getting close if they're not already on, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, the rules of war. I forgot what they call it, but but anyway, uh, in in the military, there's um, there's certain rules that they go by before they can open up, before they can before they can start firing, and then once you get to that certain point, then they can start firing on the military. It's to that point almost with the police and it's funny because uh, or in enforcement it's not even the police I mean we're talking you know IRS agents are getting armed uh, you know um, what do you call them environmental you know I mean all of these people are getting armed you know and the reason they're getting armed is to protect themselves yeah they can feed that to the public and like I say the sheeple will go along with this stuff and as long as the sheeple act a certain way and go along with the program they won't be hurt um, that's called tyranny <laughs> so we've got problems we've got severe problems and how we're gonna deal with it uh, I know and I've told you the three-man militia and how it works and I realize people aren't going to do it, especially the sheeple. They're not going to do it. It's much easier for them just to do as they're told. So, but uh, but I say, when it comes to the book, remember you're at the disadvantage. When you come to a roadblock, they know exactly what your options are when you come to that roadblock. So you don't. You don't know these options. That's why one of the things that they, well. Could you pull over here? You know, they're asking you to pull over here. Well, you know, do I have to? <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't know. We're trying to be cooperative, but what they're doing is setting us up. And that happens in a lot of stuff. A lot of these uh, terrorist bombers and all this kind of stuff, a lot of them are being set up. And so, because these people have to justify uh, all the money that they're getting allotted from the government. So they know the book that they're working in. We don't. You have to be 
you have to prepare the best you can. It's getting to the point where or I talked about the three-man militia taking care of their own local community. Uh, my local community is the only place that I feel safe when I'm in the States. Uh, whenever I leave my local community, I realize uh, there's another playbook going on and I'm at the disadvantage. So, and there's nothing we can do about it. Like I say, that's what tyranny is all about. That's what happens when the government controls the people instead of the people controlling the government. This is Mike. No stress Mike dot com.